Recording in progress. Okay, everyone, um, I, uh, it's a pleasure to call to order this meeting of the Town of Poughkeepsie uh, Town Board, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, let's start with the roll call. Good evening, Bill Reuter, first ward. Barbara Laird, second ward. Mike Safone, fourth ward. Ryan Sharp, fifth ward. Ann Trish, sixth ward. Felicia Salvatore, town clerk. Jim Nelson, attorney for the town. Rebecca Edwards, town supervisor. Okay, just a few quick announcements here to start. I want to thank those folks who came out for the blood drive at town hall on Monday. Uh, there was enough uh, blood donated to save 51 lives. So we had a good turnout and uh, would be great to even brainstorm on how we could uh, do even more because they are a great team. Um, we uh, received notice that the Dutchess County OFA picnic, was, the Office for the Aging picnic was postponed till Friday. It was supposed to be today, but today was just a little bit hot uh, to say the least. And so it's postponed until Friday at 1130 at Bowdoin Park. So if you know anyone who's planning to go, who has a reservation, um, please let them know. Um, the town has finished its pickleball courts at Crestwood. We're gonna be doing some publicity over the next week or two for that. This is the second set of pickleball courts after the ones in the Hagen Park. And then we also have some at Quiet Cove, courtesy of the county. But we now have new pickleball courts at Crestwood. And uh, many thanks to the Recreation Department uh, for their work on that and Recreation and Highway, also for the Sheaf Road Playground and dugouts and parking lot, which is nearly done. And by the time we meet again, we'll be able to hopefully set a date to celebrate uh, with our recently retired uh, Recreation Director, Janet McHugh, and all the staff, including the highway folks who have helped out a great deal uh, in getting that park fully renovated. Uh, last but not least, school is out. 
and summer camp is starting and uh, please let people know that there are some spaces left in the summer camp and uh, there's always a flurry of registration this week so I want to encourage people to register for that. Uh, oh, and one last thing for board members. Uh, we do at Town Hall deal with a lot of things, and I know you as board members deal with a lot of uh, uh, personal conflicts, including conflicts between neighbors. Uh, and uh, I get put in each of your mailboxes a couple of brochures from the Mediation Center with the idea that all of us, if we find that there's been an ongoing conflict between neighbors or there's an issue that might, any issue that might be resolved by mediation, that it's helpful to refer uh, people to this. Mediation is free. And it's wide, you know, it's available. I know that uh, officers in the town police also make referrals to the mediation center. So it's something that we can do. And I gave a couple of brochures to everybody to make sure that we all have them. And encourage anyone who's facing pretty much any kind of interpersonal conflict to consider the mediation center process because it's really good. It can be very, very helpful. Um, okay, uh, let me go over the agenda briefly. Uh, we have an auction item uh, for surplus police vehicles, which we need to talk about at the beginning. Uh, we have, uh, we're working on amending our contract for the Jones Street sidewalk replacement, and then a, uh, a further replacement on Jones. Uh, we are voting on whether to authorize a block party for residents of Ziegler Avenue in Case Court. We are setting a date for a public hearing on stop intersections at Salem Court, Briarcliff Avenue and Roland Terrace Alexander Boulevard. Um, we are uh, voting on a proposed municipal co cooperation agreement to have an animal control officer who would be shared among several towns. And uh, we have tax cert settlements for two properties in the town. We have two properties proposed for historical designation. Uh, we have uh, a, uh, a clerk, Salvatore, has a 30-day liquor license from the City Line Diner. Uh, we have a uh, David Hecht uh, as a nominee to the Town of Poughkeepsie's Ethics Board. We have Chuck Agro as a nominee to the Historic Preservation Board from uh, John Pinna, our town historian. Um, we have a legal resolution uh, uh, with regard to dredging by Tilcon. Um, and then we want to have a little bit of a discussion about tattoo parlors and where they fit in our town code and in our zoning. Um, we uh, are going to withdraw item uh, 15 uh, because we need to have some conversation uh, in executive session. So we're withdrawing that for now um, as we work, move toward an appointment. Um, we have an appointment to, uh, for a senior clerk in the Justice Court. Uh, we have some notifications from the clerk. We have an approval of minutes from the clerk. Um, we have two public hearing dates to set for the, uh, from the zoning administrator over property maintenance and some notifications and a resolution. Number 19 is removed. Oh, we, number 19 is removed. No, no, I, it must be number eight, uh, 20 because I went by 87 Colburn and it is mowed. Okay. Well, uh, before we go, to, we're removing 19. Has the garbage been picked up in the backyard? Because they cut the grass, but there's a bunch of debris and furniture. I'd rather leave it on and take it off, and not start the process over. I'd rather leave it on until it's all gone. I was just told to remove it. I don't know the stories behind it before we put ads in the paper and stuff. So that's fine with me if you leave it on. Well, right. We could just very table minimal it. cost. Huh? We could table it to the next meeting. Okay, too. why don't we, we take it? We, yeah. we, could, we, could, we could table it. Why don't we leave it on the agenda, but when we get to it, we can decide what to do. Okay. We can come back, okay? I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. The backyard was full of garbage yesterday. Okay, as of yesterday. Okay. And 87 has been mowed too, you said? Yeah, I just drove by it two days ago. It's mowed, and it doesn't say anything about garbage in the backyard. Okay, let's loop back around. Okay. Um, we have, um, so, and we have a notification from the town clerk and also resolutions on uh, standard work day for uh, elected officials for uh, uh, town employees for the uh, pension system. And then we'll have some committee reports and we need to go into executive session at the end. Okay, I move to suspend the rules for anyone who would like to speak on items that are on the agenda uh, for up to three minutes. Uh, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so the floor is open for any member of the public who would like to speak on items that are on tonight's agenda. Doreen? Thank you. Um, I have a question about number seven, the tax uh, settlement for um, 2750 South Road. Um, isn't that just one property? Is that just for the Holiday Inn? 
I, I wasn't on. sure. I'm sorry, oh, Rebecca. I thought you had said two properties, but I wasn't sure. I think you're right. I think it is one property. It has a double name, but it's got one okay. location address. Thank you. My that's my mistake. That's okay because I just wanted to um, to make sure I was talking about the the correct um, item. You are so, my mistake. Thanks. Okay, so um, yeah, that's the Holiday Inn Express, I believe, on uh, Sharon Drive, Route Nine and Sharon Drive, and I looked on Parcel Access, and the market value of that is eight point four million dollars, and according to the settlement. It's bringing the assessed value down to 5.1 million. I'm just wondering why that is, because you know I've heard many times people say that we need more hotels here in the town of Poughkeepsie, and if that's the case, what's the issue with the um, Holiday Inn that they need to have their assessment lowered by almost uh, three million dollars off of its market value? I'm not sure, and I don't think I brought the email that I have from the assessor on this. I'm not sure that that's the assessed value, right? Here it is. Um, I think the assessed value is lower than the market value, right? Um, well, right, but it, but even so, it went from 7.3 million of assessed value to 5.1 million. So that's still over $2 million for a hotel when I keep hearing in various meetings, like at, you know, Dutch County IDA meetings that, well, we need more hotels in the town of Poughkeepsie. So I was just wondering why that was. Does anybody know? This one is not thriving. I haven't had a longer conversation about that with the assessor. Obviously, we're never thrilled to reduce tax bills, but this is a calculation about whether this is, you know, a, a judgment call as to um, whether a court, a lengthy court case over valuation is worth it. and. Um, the conclusion in this case by our, our team that's working on tax search was that it's, you know, that, that we need to make this settlement. So it is something okay, we've been discussing. Okay, thank you. And the only other thing I'd like to uh, remind the board of is that, you know, as of earlier this afternoon, there were still several items that had said documents to, to follow. And as I've been uh, reminding the board for, for years that uh, there is the requirement of the open meetings law about posting documents 24 hours ahead of time. So I'd like you to just please keep that in mind. Thank you. We will. Thank you. We'll do our best. Thanks. Is there anyone else here in the room or on Zoom who would like to speak to items that are on the agenda tonight? Okay, seeing none, I move that we return to regular session. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we return to regular session. Okay, then we are starting with um, uh, number one. Be resolved, Town Board, Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby declare the town to have um, you know, vehicles and equipment to be surplus and does hereby authorize the sale of those surplus vehicles and equipment as shown in the annexed email from Auto Center Manager Brian Porter and authorized to be sold by supervisor and her designee at an online web auction conducted by Absolute Auction Center at their standard rates, provided that, <clears throat> excuse me, a complete record of the equipment and the results of the auction be maintained. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, discussion. Um, I, I would like to discuss this for just a minute. So uh, the town police impound yard is very full um, they have uh, a real space issue that's been building up for a while and uh, sale of these surplus vehicles and equipment would make it a lot easier for them to uh, to do what they need to do, which is that they've got, you know, the, the lot is, is really over full. Um, I did talk with Brian Porter this afternoon who also wants to uh, auction a number of, of other things uh, from other departments, surplus material from other town departments. So if we pass this tonight, he's going to wrap that with another proposal on July 10th at our next meeting to uh, combine this with auction some of some additional items. Um, I would like to have more information myself about the impound uh, the impounded vehicles 
So I would like to suggest that we consider tabling this and take a couple of weeks to understand it better. I will be very frank and say I'm a new board member and this is the first time at the town level, I've talked about it at the county level as a county legislature, but this is the first time I want to sort of uh, to, to walk through it. But if the rest of the board or a majority of the board is comfortable going ahead and uh, voting for this, we can. But I just want to express some concern that I would like to know a little bit more. I can, we can vote and then I can go try to learn a little bit more about it. Uh, you know, I, I always, yeah. that makes me nervous. Uh, but we can, you know. This, this is the old cars, correct, that were rusted and sitting there? These are, in, these, were taken in an impound and nobody picked them up and cleaned them? That's right. I think they've been in impound for quite a while. Okay, just to repeat, repeat. so the, I'm sure one, to get it on the tape, um, these are very old cars and the town clearly has um, license to sell them. Correct, we've done it before. If you wanna wait until the next meeting, I have no problem, you wanna go look at them or whatever, that's right. fine. Well, I just wanna understand the process and you know the, the, the procedure by which we well, sell off of people's property, right? Because it has come to us and I wanna no understand one, it better. No but. one's picked them up, claimed them, they have to pay the impound charge, I believe, and they yep. don't wanna pay it, so. Yep. Okay. The charge is worth more than what the vehicle's worth. Uh, what do other, what do other town board members wish uh, to do? You know, supervisor, I would say that's perfectly fine if you feel you want to get more comfortable with the process, and it'd be good to have a list as well. We I say it's annex, we don't have that list. So. Right, we did get it by email. I think right. I forwarded it by email. We did? But oh, it yeah. is a list. It's 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 t it's you know make yeah. model year right. It's, okay, that's so yeah. you know the circumstances are a little unclear, and I don't want to inconvenience the police who very much need those spots. The impound lot is full, so I, I'm torn. And I thought I would just lay it out here that I don't know what we should do and see what others think. If, the, if it's going to be done with other surplus materials, it's all going to be done at the same day anyway. This isn't going to make much of a difference. You're not moving them off the site today, are you? Well, that's the issue. There's two issues here. There's the could could you come? To, would you mind come to the mic? I just want to make sure we're where everybody's in on the conversation. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Chief. There's there's two issues and they're getting combined into one. One is the process of the town taking possession uh, through a court proceeding through local town court to seize the and becoming ownership. And once you do that, that's what I'm looking for immediate approval for so that we can then take them out of the secure facility of the impound yard to make room for currently, which some people on the board were affected by, uh, we've had a recent rash of serious physical injuries and I have four extra cars that I have to hold for evidence and I don't have room for them. Uh, so that's why I'm looking for these six cars that we've submitted since uh, the end of May to have seized through a court proceeding. I'm in no rush to have them sold or auctioned if you have a concern over that process. So that it's kind of separate. So okay, you, you just need disapproval for the court space. taking to move them off the off the yard. So I can get them out because once Technically, there's still somebody else's property. I cannot. I want to keep them secure. God forbid something happens. So once we take ownership, you can actually. I can move it into okay. the non-secure area and make room for in my evidence okay. lot. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. It seems like maybe we should go ahead and do yeah. this, yeah. get this done, help that, help out um, with the overcrowding, and then we can figure out more as we go along. Is that all right with everyone? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. All right. So with apologies for slowing that down, um, is there any further discussion? No. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Yes, thanks very much. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, then um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the motion carries six to zero, <clears throat> the resolution. Okay, this is resolution 2A. The town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby ratify the supervisor's execution of an amendment and extension agreement with the county of Dutchess to provide for the county's funding through the Community Development Block Grant Program, County File Number 17798 of the Jones Street ADA Sidewalk Project, a copy of which is annexed. So moved. Second. Second. All right, any discussion? Okay, this it, project is underway. It's, so. it's still underway? Is it, it looks really good, though. It may be done. I just haven't driven over there in the last day or two. Yeah, because it, it was very looks close. really good, so I was hoping it was kind of done by now. Yep, I think it's close. Good. But we need the, you know, amendment. Yeah, we extension. need to do the right. paperwork. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolution carries 6 0. 
Here's all town board, town of Kids is hereby ratify the supervisor's execution of agreement with the county of Dutch to provide for the county's funding through the community block grant program of ADA sidewalks phase two for Springside Avenue project, a copy of this annex. And this is a grant for a total of uh, $142,626. So moved. Second. Okay, and this enables us to extend that project uh, with a big thank you to the county and the CDBG program for enabling us to extend that project further and, uh, and um, get that street uh, looking really good, particularly for pedestrians. Any uh, further comment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolution carries 6-0. Resolution 3, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize the town clerk to advertise for bids for Springside Avenue sidewalk replacement pursuant to plans and specifications prepared, which plans and specifications will be available on July 5th in the office of the town clerk with an optional site visit to be held at 1 p.m. on July 16, 2024, and the bid opening will be held on July 30th, 2024, at 11 a.m. Be further resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby reserve the right to accept or reject all bids in whole or part, and the town board does hereby determine that this action is a type two action requiring no environmental re uh, review. Uh, so moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolution carries 6-0. Be resolved, the Town Board of Town Poughkeepsie does hereby approve the application submitted by Jillian Permili Durham to hold a block party at Case Court and North and South Ziegler Avenue intersections with Case Court on June 29th, 2024, with a rain date of July 13th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And he does hereby authorize the Town Poughkeepsie Peace Police Department Traffic Division to close said road will allow access for emergency vehicles from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. and be further resolved the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby waive the open container law in the event alcoholic beverages are to be served. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I spoke with Jillian. We're very excited. I'm hoping she has really good weather for Saturday. So fingers crossed. All right. So Saturday, July 13th. No, it's June Oh, I'm 29th. sorry, June 29th. Wow. Yeah, coming up. That's coming it, it, up. Yeah, July 13th the, the is the rain, rain date. Is the 13th. Yeah, okay, got it. All right. Thank okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The resolution carries 6 0. I think I'm next, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, resolution number uh, five is. Uh, that uh, the, the be it resolved that the town board uh, uh, does hereby set July 17th, 2024 at 7 p.m. at the town hall as, uh, as the time, date, and place of a public hearing to consider local law amendments to the town code chapter 195 entitled vehicles and traffic, specifically 195-44 schedule nine stop intersections with the language to be added underlined and the language to be deleted stricken as follows. Add to this section stop sign on Salem Court in the western direction of travel at the intersection with Briarcliff Avenue and a stop sign on Roland Terrace. The direction of travel would be west at the intersection with Alexander Boulevard. Be it further resolved that the town board does determine that this is a type two action requiring no environmental review. <laughs> and that said local law, if adopted, shall become effective immediately upon filing with the Secretary of State. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? This is in Ward 2, right? Yes. Yep. I feel that we could just leave the discussion for, for the um, public hearing. The public hearing. <laughs> that seems like a great idea. Okay. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? The resolution carries 6-0. Three resolve the supervisor and a designee is authorized to sign an animal control officer shared services cooperation agreement. It's substantially the form annexed on terms acceptable to the supervisor after consulta consultation with the attorney of the town between the town of Poughkeepsie, LaGrange, Hyde Park, Beekman, Clinton, and um, you know Pleasant Valley to provide animal control services. Be it further resolved this type two action requiring no secret review. So moved. Second. Second. So discussion. I think I this think is an excellent 
uh, move to go in this direction. If it works out well, it's going to save us money and have a full-time animal control officer and it's proportioned to the size of the town for the cost. So mm. we're looking at what? maybe 26,754 26, to be exact, right? Which is a lot less than we have been paying right. for a full-time uh, officer with benefits. Right. Obviously, full -time. Right. And obviously a little overtime may happen if we have something going on that, that's right. not business hours. But uh, overall, I think uh, if we get one person that really likes this job and it's not all too overwhelming, this could really work out. So the really good news is that I think this person already started <laughs> and that we can get their phone number tomorrow morning if we pass this, which we might need because I've been hearing from uh, the zoning administrator that we might need this. Um, so just to be clear in the for the public record, so the this was came out of a conversation with Supervisor Alan Bell of LaGrange. LaGrange is taking the lead. The animal control officer will use LaGrange's vehicle and equipment. Uh, and there are five towns involved, LaGrange, uh, Hyde Park, Beekman, Clinton, and Pleasant Valley, and six with us, um, five other towns. Um, and by population, we're going to pay in according to our population. And we did do a rough estimate of how many calls each place gets, although it's very highly variable to try to get a sense of whether this is doable. This agreement goes to the end of this year, so we can try it out for six months here or so and see how it uh, goes. It renews annually after that. And the idea is that the ACO is on call from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. on weekdays, which is the town hall of LaGrange hours. And also uh, will be in the town hall in the town of Poughkeepsie one day a week. The first priority will be for them to work with our shelter, which is currently Arlington Animal Hospital, yep. uh, to make sure that any dogs that we have left there, that there's plenty of advertisement and the opportunity for them to get adopted so that we don't have uh, dogs left there for a long time to help troubleshoot any other problems that may come up. But also they may work on a rabies clinic or other issues that we have. And they'll be how we have to find a spot for them in town hall because the one day a week um, they're going to be here in the town. And hopefully this is going to work really well and, you know, enable us to save some costs and work with other municipalities. I, I just want to say I'm really excited because I was in my neighborhood, saw the town of Poughkeepsie police car drive by, I'm waving, I was like, what's he doing? And stopped at a neighbor's house and picked up a dog on a leash and put him in his car oh. and I thought, that's probably not what they should be doing. Oh. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, what if that dog wrecks the inside of the police car or whatever so i was quite happy to see that so ACO. unfortunately you know the aco will only be available 8 30 to 4 on weekdays but if this works out well we can start talking about we are we as the town could choose to pay overtime we also you know to for them to work at other hours and we might be able to do some off some on you know on call hours we're just going to sort of figure out how this works as it goes along okay any other discussion i think it's great cooperation between the uh, town supervisors that's a wonderful thing so I appreciate this. I think it's a great agreement. I just did have one question. It's all insurances, right? So if in the unfortunate fact someone did maintain an injury, let's say in Hyde Park, and became disabled, that there's state insurance that covers that. Yes, right? That's this not person is a full-time employee of the town of LaGrange right. and insured by the town of LaGrange, and they will bill us monthly for our share of their services. But essentially, LaGrange has already hired this person, which is why, which is, in, so, who's very experienced and qualified. So we can, we, the insurance is going to be part of their, right. I mean, we'll so pay we, our prorated share, but it'll be part of their. Right. So we would prorate that share in case something did it as if they were, one of our own employees, but however, we would only pay the percent. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And okay. any animals they pick up in our town will go to our? Go to our shelter. Oh, that's really Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Each town has their own shelter, that's whatever good. that may be. Any, any, you know, this person just has to, has to remember, Where you know, is. six, six towns, right? Six shelters. <laughs> I'm not sure. And, but it also creates a little consortium. We've been having some concerns about getting, um, support for humane law for eight cases of animal abuse or whatever. And we now have a group of us, six towns that can sort of talk that through and an, uh, hopefully an ACO who's seeing what's going on in surrounding municipalities too. So hopefully, Fantastic. hopefully this is going to work out well. We'll see. Sure. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolution carries 6-0. forgot who's, who's up next, me? Yeah. I think oh. so. Yes. <laughs> Number seven. Uh, be it resolved, the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize the settlement of the tax certiori proceeding instituted by MRC Poughkeepsie LLC, GMS Poughkeepsie Realty LLC, and 
2750 South Road Holdings, LLC. This is for one property located in the town of Poughkeepsie and designated at that tax grid number um, for the 2023, oh, sorry, for the block lot for the 2023 and 2023 tax assessment roll as shown on the attached consent judgment. And be it further resolved, the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize the supervisor or her designee, town assessor Jennifer Mund and Kyle Barnett of Vanderwater and Vanderwater LLP to sign such papers as are necessary to effectuate said settlement. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Well, I just hope with the tax savings, they're going to put some money back into the hotel because they used to be very busy before the other hotel built down south on South Road. So hopefully they'll renovate it because it does get busy on weekends when they have a lot of construction jobs. I see trucks in there all the time and the parking lot is full, so. Yes. Um, I mean, yes, go ahead. Somebody else? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Supervisor. Um, yeah, I have some concerns with this and I know that, uh, you know that I've been keeping a tally of these things. So it's about $8 million now. Our assessment rolls are down for the year. Now look at the details of this case. Our assessor, as I understand it, assessed it at $7,300,000 in 2023, increased that another 10% to 7,958,000 in 2024. Then the judge of the court reduced that total assessment 35% or 2.8 million dollars uh, for both years necessitating a 45,000 plus refund to the town or that the town has to pay um, so I'm looking at this and I what we have behind here is the consent order so what I would really like to see is the judge's rationale and the judge's uh, you know decision and the court's decision as to how they've determined that this assessment should be reduced by 35%. So I'm concerned about that and we don't have that information. I'd like to see that before I vote on it. Um, you know, if we're confident in the process, um, then we should appeal it. But, um, you know, I'm not confident in voting on it unless I have the information as to the rationale behind the reduction. Mr. Nelson? The, uh, th this, and I am not the tax certiorari person, but this is a consent judgment. Yeah. So it, it basically is an agreement between the two parties, which is then submitted to a judge, and the judge executes it as a judge based on the agreement of the mm -hmm. parties. And in, in those situations, the judges don't render um, opinions. They, they ask the lawyers questions when they're in court. Mm -hmm. and chambers and stuff, but there, there's no history, if you will, in the docket. Um, if you wanted information on this, people I would talk to would be uh, Kyle, the lawyer, and Jennifer, the assessor. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to somehow condition this, um, mm -hmm. you could do that. Mm -hmm. So we is there, what is there, so there's no, you know, decision by the court before the consent order that's what you're saying no they they, they go to court they okay. they argue they sometimes uh, get preliminary appraisals uh, but you'd only get a decision if it yeah. actually was submitted for adjudication. well thank you but in any event I don't understand the rationale between uh, as to why the parties would agree after increasing the assessment almost 10 percent that we then reduce it 35 percent I don't know, my guess would be the numbers of, re of occupants in the hotel probably went down significantly since the other hotels got renovated and built. So they're probably making that case. I mean, I'm not saying that's what happened here, but I, it's probably a good opinion that that's what they did. And when you show the numbers of what you made this year, what's coming in now, to compared to other hotels in the area, what the tax rate is, you're paying the exact same tax rate as some others with similar uh, room rates and, and, and numbers. You know, if you're not making the money as the other ones are, you're going to ask for a tax break, and obviously so they, they agreed to it. So that they don't close down. Right. Well, right. 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 I, I would say a couple, well, I have a couple of thoughts. The first is that um, 
I, I have talked with our assessor, Jennifer Mond, and with Kyle Barnett, and I'm really impressed with them. I don't think that they are just sort of saying, oh, gee, um, let's give people their tax money back. That's, I mean, there's a calculation going on here over what, what's possible and what's realistic and also what the cost of, you know, what, what the cost of going to court is. Um, that was a helpful conversation, and I'm wondering if we want to create a little ad hoc committee that could go and talk with them. At an earlier meeting, I set aside some supervisor's funds to make sure the assessor had a little bit more money to go fight in court a couple of cases that she wanted to fight and that I think um, Kyle Barnett was, you know, they were picking out a couple of cases that they were going to try to carry forward to push back on some of the tax certs. Uh, this was not one of them, so far as I know, but maybe we could, you know, Bill, if you're interested, Absolutely. and maybe if there's another board member who yeah, might be interested okay. as well, Mike, maybe the three of us can sit down with them yeah. and talk through the process. And, uh, you know, we did try, we started a couple months ago a strategy of being a little bit more aggressive about this. How's that going? Mm -hmm. You know, what are, how do they see the situation? Yeah. Um, I'd be happy, We, I mean, we could consider tabling this one for two weeks while we have that conversation. We could go ahead and vote for it now. Well, that would be, uh, you understand, Mike. Well, we yes, of course, in, none in, of us in, are, yeah, right. But in, in the process is that we went through the assessment, increased it, and then agreed to a 35% reduction. Well, this Something is Something doesn't sound, I mean, I just we, like to know the rationale. For we it. have had, and you specifically, as well as myself, have had this question since January when we started. And we talked about having a small committee back in January or February. I agree so with that. We should uh -huh. do it. We should okay. do it. Yeah. But I'm okay with voting on this and moving ahead because yeah. I'm wondering if we don't do this and it was agreed upon if we hold it up in court, is there any ramification that comes back and hurts the town? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know if there's a conference coming up or a requirement to file uh, right. what's called a note of issue or you know, have to order your appraisals by a certain date. I'm not trying to panic into it, but there are situations where I don't know if this is one of them, where it, it needs to be done within a certain period of time. Yeah, right. and I did I did not know that we want you know we might want to consider that tonight, so I didn't ask the assessor about timing. Um, I mean, I, I think I trust our team. I think they're very good. I don't think that they are uh, pushovers, and I think we should go ahead and vote for it. But I do think the larger issue mm -hmm. of tax certs and. Um, I, somebody told me that there's a supervisor in over in Ulster County somewhere who fights every single one of them. Like, no matter what, we're going to go to court for the, all the way to the very end, right? Well, yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> but it's expensive, right? It ends up costing a lot. So, so when you fight right. these, you end up going to court and we pay fees all over the place. And you often lose. Right? I mean, well, you you yeah. can lose, right? Yeah. Um, because I mean, judges aren't experts on these things. We have experts actually going over the appraisals and coming up with a, a number that they both sides can live with. You're thrown at the mercy of the judge, and they're right. not experts, so they could go yeah. way one way or the other, depending on right. who they think it's, made the best argument. It's unpredictable, and it's very interesting to talk to Assessor Mund and to Kyle Barnett about this process and what they've experienced in, t in you know, deciding which ones to fight and which ones not to fight. So I think it's worth having that conversation. I'd, I'd like to vote on this tonight, okay. but also be part of that smaller committee to okay, great. look into okay. that. That would be great. I'll set that up this week. Um, any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Those opposed? Opposed. Okay. Did I right. get a second? I don't know if I Oh, did oh. you second? I thought we did when it was presented. Uh, Barbara moved it. Rebecca. Rebecca. Uh, I think I said it. Okay, yeah, sorry, I missed right. it. Thank you. That's right. And uh, the resolution passes by five to one. Okay. Whereas the Town Board, Town of Poughkeepsie, has received applications from Town Historian John Pennant and the Historic Preservation Commission for property known as the Millard House, 20 Main Street in Hamburg, New York. Grid number 134689 6057075708140000. To designate said property as historic landmark, may therefore be resolved. Town Board Town of Gibbs is hereby authorized and direct the town clerk to publish notice of public hearing to be held on the 17th day of July 2024 at 7 p.m. in Town Hall, 1 over Rocker Road, Poughkeepsie, New York. Be it further resolved, Town Board Town of Gibbs is hereby direct and authorized town clerk to forward a notice by certified mail, return receipt requested to the owner or owners of the parcel on which the proposed landmark site or historic district is situated and by regular mail to the owners of all property located within 300 feet of the exterior boundary lines of subject parcel. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. 
Okay, any discussion? I uh, just want to make clear that these owners do approve of this and have signed the application and they are all in favor of this. And the Historic Preservation Commission, we had a couple of interns this summer and they really did an amazing job turning out the histories of these houses. So <coughs> the history on this one is pretty lengthy. And it has an interesting, the next one's even more interesting, but yeah, it has a pretty interesting history, so. Really interesting, there's a number of properties in New Hamburg now that have Gothic elements yes. or architecturally very striking and that are now preserved historically. So this is part of a kind of preservation effort in the neighborhood. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolution carries six to one. Nope. Yeah. Six to zero. Six, six to zero. zero. Sorry. One less thing. Yeah. <laughs> Lost my concentration there for a minute. Okay. Resolution 9, whereas the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie has received applications from town historian John Pinn and the Historic Preservation Commission for the property known as 17 Croft Road, uh, Poughkeepsie, New York, uh, and the grid number is enclosed to designate said property as historic landmark. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize and direct the town clerk to publish notice of a public hearing to be held on the 17th day of July. 2024 at 7 p.m. at the Town Hall, Town of Poughkeepsie, and uh, the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does direct and authorize the Town Clerk to forward notice by certified mail return receipt requested to the owners or owners of the parcel on which the proposed landmark site or historic district is situated and by regular mail to the owners of all property located within 300 feet of the exterior boundary lines of the subject parcel. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah. And again, the owners are in favor of this and have signed off on the application. And this house is actually adorable. It's that little house in front of Todd Middle School in Spackenkill. And at one point, it was a stables. It was the stables there for. Isn't there a racetrack there? There was a racetrack there. Not quite there, but adjacent. Anyways, and it, it was part of Spackenkill Farms and they had a racetrack and then at one point um there was a stables and at one point colonel jacob rupert jr owned it and yes he was the son of millionaire jacob rupert and as he was well they kept the world war one horses there and as he began dismantling the racetrack and the holdings he went and bought the yankees I was going to say, Mike, he bought the, was, this, this house was built by someone who bought the Yankees, the so it could be an issue for you. I wore the Met tie just for tonight's there moment. Yeah. Not to be forgotten, the other team in New York. Okay. Yeah, but it's really fascinating. Of course, then they added on to it, and now it is a home, but the stables, the original stables are still there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. cool. It's okay. very cool. That's great. Could I, could I just ask, um, now that I'm, you've piqued my interest in these two homes, is it possible to get a photo of to be included with all the paperwork just there, so we can see the house in, in, in the future? I thought I saw a rendering. The rendering, right? Google. Yeah, right. Or drive, a drive past it. Okay, yeah. thank you. If we got the materials electronically, then we could have a nice color picture with them too. So yeah. that would be awesome, thank right? You. That, that's always very helpful. I don't know if it's a privacy issue that people don't want their house, the picture of their no, house all over. I think the, the owners of the houses are very actively involved in the process of, yeah. of the designation. Okay. So just want, I just want to take the moment to thank John Peter for his work and you know leadership of pulling all this together for and having the meetings and everything. Great work, John. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The resolution carries 6-0. Okay, be it resolved, the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby acknowledge receipt of the request from City Line Diner Corporation at 829 Main Street, Poughkeepsie for a waiver of the 30-day review period for a liquor license application and be further resolved, the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby approve the clerk's forwarding of a waiver and consent and pursuant to the attached request, so moved. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? I've eaten at the City Line Diner. So they, they renovated it very well. They're open now? Yeah, they're okay. Open. Yeah, I had lunch there today. It was really good. Excellent. Okay. Did they redo the whole inside? They did. Yeah. They have a mural on the side with a uh, old New York City theme, black and white. Nice. Okay. I can't wait so, to go. I can't wait to walk in.
some 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 positive plugs here for the City Line Diner. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Six to zero. Okay. Uh, be it resolved that the town board does hereby appoint David Hecht to the Board of Ethics uh, for a term which expires on February 28th, 2028. So moved. Second. Second. I believe I forwarded a resume to uh, everyone, and we want to make sure that that also gets included in the minutes as well. I want to be consistent about making sure we have resumes for everyone. Uh, I'm delighted to report we have another person who has now stepped forward to serve on the Board of Ethics. We'll receive that on July 10th. I think we still have one more vacancy still, but we're building the Board of Ethics, which is great. Um, any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Resolution carries 6-0. Be resolved, Town Board of Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby appoint Chuck Argo to the Town of Poughkeepsie Historical uh, Preservation Commission through April 19th, 2027, due to a vacancy effective immediately. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. I did. We did not get his 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 resume to everyone in advance, so I did just pass it out so everyone can see it. He's highly qualified. Someone who has a. Uh, a lot of professional experience in the field of historic preservation and art, a former employee of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, a uh, number of publications. So it's really quite impressive to have him on our historic preservation board. Um, I want to make, again, to make sure that we can get um, the, we'll get an, an electronic copy, electronic copy of this for the minutes, but also just wanted everybody to see it because he's a pretty cool candidate. Thank you. So, yeah, okay. I also like to point out that the house where he resides in is already a designated house by us. Mm. Very cool. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yes. All this those is, in, this yeah. is very impressive. I have trouble with a one page resume. So. I know. <laughs> I know. The, the selected bibliography of his publications, pretty good. Unbelievable. Right. Yeah. Um, yes, John? That's terrific. Just for the record, to make sure, since um, uh, the town historian was not at the mic here, that recording um, stopped. That, oh, what happened to the recording? Recording in progress. There we go. Um, is that uh, the town historian interviewed him for two hours? Was very impressed. Feels that he brings a great deal to the table to help the historic preservation commission in the town. Uh, very impressive candidate. So thank you again very much for your work. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolution carries six zero. Resolution 13, Waterfront Consistency Review for Clinton Point Quarry Maintenance Dredging. Uh, the New York State Executive Law Article 42, the Town of Poughkeepsie is authorized to review state actions located on the town's waterfront for consistency with our local waterfront revitalization program plan. And the town received notice from the New York State DEC regarding an application from Tilcon to dredge a dredging permit to perform maintenance dredging of its dockage along the Hudson River at the Clinton Point Quarry. And the Director of Municipal Development has reviewed the application and advises that is generally consistent with the LWRP. Now therefore be it resolved, the Town Board authorizes the Town Supervisor and Director of Municipal Development to respond to the referral and indicate that the Town has no objection to the action so moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Mm, I think we gotta keep the okay. water clear so we gotta drive. Yep, it says maintenance dredging. We don't see that this is different than anything that's happened in the past. It's ongoing, so uh, not an issue of concern for our water plant plan. So, um, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolution carries six to zero. Okay, the next one I'd like to introduce, if I could, and it is not. It is. It, we're seeking the board's inclination rather than a vote tonight. But I'm going to pass this out. It's a couple of. Um, it's a couple of excerpts from the town code, so it may not be necessary. But I thought it might be helpful to have it. So um, the question is, um, in, and I sent an email about this today as well, that the, um, that uh, is, is how we feel about tattoo parlors. Uh, they are included in the highway business district, as you'll see, um, as being allowed if there is a special use permit. Um, there is a, uh, a uh, um, Tattoo parlor that uh, proposed to open in the Galleria Mall, which is the shopping center business district, and we do not include tattoo parlors as being um, uh, 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 allowed by a special use permit to exist there. So the problem is that uh, this came through the town processes for permitting, 
and the tattoo parlor, which was very, they weren't hiding what they were doing. They're very clear that they were a tattoo uh, a parlor uh, and they, uh, they got permits from the town and uh, were prepared to open. Uh, in fact, they were open. So, uh, and then it became clear that this is not in the town's zoning. So as I understand it, we have three choices. We can say, uh, you know, the town uh, does not want tattoo parlors in shopping center business districts, and therefore this operation, you know, this, this new small business should shut down. Uh, or we can say that we want to extend uh, this, the, uh, we can add tattoo parlors <coughs> to the list of potential uh, um, uses for special use, uh, permitted uses if you have a special use permit in the shopping center district. Um, or we could revise more generally how we see tattoo parlors and we would need to make a change in code. So this is going to take us a little while uh, and we might want to, you know, we would have to set a hearing and so forth. So we wanted to get a sense of the board and its, and its view. I will say that my view is that tattoo parlors are a personal, I, honestly, I feel like they're a personal service uh, business like nail, you know, nails or anything else like that. They are regulated by the Department of Health. They, you know, they have to f be licensed for health purposes, and they also uh, uh, can't serve anybody under 18. They have to well, get an 18, uh, it has to be 18 they, and up. They're, they're not so. the tattoo parlors of, that we see on TV from the 70s. These are legitimate, I mean, not that they weren't legitimate in the 70s, yeah. <laughs> but they're clean, they're airy, they're open, they're not open all night long. They have working business hours now, so. Right, I, um, I agree. I think this is a shift in public yeah, perception I, and, a, and, a, and one of these cases where our code may be updated and we might wanna just say, you know, yes. um, this well, is. This is also a shift in retail too, because malls are becoming centers of entertainment and other activities, not just shopping, because there's just not enough retail to fill them up anymore, so. I hate to say it, it's good for the mall too, yeah, no, to be able to have traffic. one space filled and active. Right. To eat, I agree too. So, so it sounds like there's a general leaning in that direction. Well, Do we still think that each tattoo parlor, I believe there's three that were allowed in the Arlington Town Center and one that's been allowed at the, um, the Red Oaks Mill yeah. uh, town, uh, business district. Um, by special use permit. Do we still want to do them one by one by special use permit or do we want to say we want to just add tattoo parlors to personal services and not have them special use permitted at all? We, I mean, we have some options here. If we add them in under personal uh, businesses, will that put them in all zones? It would put them in four zones where personal, I, I counted and I count four zones, neighborhood, highway, business, neighborhood business, highway business, and shopping center business. Those are the four where personal service businesses yeah, are listed. I don't have a problem with any of those. Going. Honestly, I think it's a benefit to have a business instead of an empty storefront. Okay, anybody, is it, so it seems like so far our inclination is to I, call these personal service yeah, businesses. I would, I would see them either as a special use permit or put them, putting them as a personal service. Maybe the problem is that outdated word parlor. That well, I wondered very, about that. That sounds very, oh, ne'er-do-wells go to the parlor. It just sounds very strange. <laughs> yeah. It's a tattoo store. Sort of like the, sta <laughs> the state of New York and its cannabis legislation referred to lounges, and I just thought that was a very bad choice yeah. of terms, right? Uh, so, um, so I think that uh, I think that uh, whatever we give, the, we will get language back. We'll be a public hearing and be a proposed change sure. of code. So we kind of want to get a sense of what people would like to do so that we get that back. Is there a sense that we would like a special use permit or not? I I, I agree with your assessment. It's a personal service, so. We don't feel the need to approve them one by, have the planning board approve them one by one? I, I, I'm good with that. Um, that's fine. I'm okay with that as a personal service. I mean, we can still review them, but, you know, mm -hmm. we can well, review the applications, can we not? Well, uh, no, we, we would not. Not, we would on a, not. not any different than we would for any other business that's opening up that would offer a site. And right, also, right? this was not a special permit from us. It's from the planning board. So they would I go see. before them. So, yeah. yeah. So it's I mean, just whether we want the planning board to take a look at them or whether they're just an allowed use. And it's right. another cost for them to open, in my opinion. 
but that's all I can say. The, to have a special use permit. It yeah. does create an extra hurdle, right? Yeah. An extra hurdle, an yeah. extra yeah. weight, yeah. an extra cost. And um, yeah, as Councilman Safone said, this is a regulated industry now. Yeah. You know, there's guidelines, and um, if there's an issue, we can check on it that way. But um, no, I would agree it's personal service. I would okay. tend to think more that way. So. Then we can take that uh, guidance back and come back with some language then. That's great. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate Thank you. that very much. Thank you. Okay. Ah, and this is uh, Resolution 15, and I believe we have, oh, I'm sorry, Resolution 15 is withdrawn. Yep. Yep. Right. Because we need to have further discussion, right? Resolution 16, we have a, um, a amended version. Um, I'm stealing my stuff. Yep, it's all yours. <laughs> you just had two. Sorry. Your turn. Your turn. You're resolved. The town board town of Kipsey is hereby appoint transfer Lori Tortorella to the position of full time senior clerk to the town of Kipsey Justice Court at the same pay rate effective uh, August 1st, 2024. Be it further resolved, the town supervisor is authorized to execute and file all documentation required by the Dutch County Department of Human Resources in connection with this appointment transfer. So moved. Second. Okay. I would just say Lori is a very dedicated uh, person in the water department. We're really sorry to lose her at town hall, but really delighted that she's finding a new place in the justice court uh, where she will um, be able to um, help them out. And they very much need that help. And I think that'll be a welcome transfer. Yeah. So great new role for her, even if we miss her at town hall. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution carries uh, six to zero. Okay. And our res Clerk. resolution Clerk. 17 okay. is referred to legal notif notification claims. Do we need to say any more? No. That's it? Okay. They're just referred to legal. Yeah. Okay. We're referring those claims to legal. That was an easy one. Okay. Okay. Good. Be resolved, the Town Board of Town Poughkeepsie does hereby accept the minutes for the following 2024 Town Board meetings to wit, May 15th, 2024 Town Board meeting, June 5th, 2024 Town Board meeting, June 12th, 2024 Special Town Board meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? Any corrections to the minutes? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The resolution carries six to zero. So going forward, you want every resume in the minutes? Would it be better to have it at this, like behind the things that we read prior? It would. Prior. It would be good to, whenever we're appointing anybody, to get their resume in advance and have it in the documents that are available to the public as well as to us. It's a beforehand. lot easier for me to, to redact their personal information yeah. on paper well, than to get it in electronic. Yeah. I was just going to say. And then add it in and. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's just my opinion. Let's try to do it that way. Okay. Okay. That Thank sounds you. great. Okay. I think we're back to the property maintenance. Yes. Um, this one's mine, right? Do I get this one? Yes. Uh -huh. You sure? Positive. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, resolution number 19, uh, whereas an order to remedy has been issued for a property at 61 Fairview Avenue, uh, pursuant to chapter 159A-4-Mowing dash dash of the town code, whereas this order to remedy has not been complied with, now therefore be it resolved that the town board sets July 17th, 2024 at 7 p.m. at town hall um, as the time, date, and place of a public hearing to consider a recommendation from the zoning administrator that the town or its contractor remove and as needed continue to remove all garden waste, fallen tree limbs, and cut the grass to a height not to exceed 12 inches all at the above property, so it will not be overgrown and unsightly. And the cost of that work shall constitute a lien and charge on the above real property until paid, satisfied, or discharged, and shall be collected in the same manner as other town charges. So moved. Second. Okay. This is the 61 Fairview. Yeah, yes. They, they had, I was there yesterday, and there was a ton of garbage. The grass was cut, but there was a ton of garbage in the back. I did not get a chance to go over there today. I wanted to, and I forgot. But um, I'd rather leave it on. We could always remove it on the 17th. Just because this is such a process that if it's not removed all the garbage in the back, then we're going to have to go back and start it over. So. And it takes a long time. So the idea is that if we have a public hearing and the, and the, the only thing that we say at the public hearing is, hurrah, this is resolved, right. then it's better to do that than to let it linger for months. It doesn't uh, say that anything about It doesn't say garbage. anything about garbage. Maybe we should amend this and start over again. Is it only says about cutting the grass? Yeah, is, it, is it yard waste? Oh, uh, garden, garden waste. waste. No, it's, there's a couple of big pieces of furniture and there's actual garbage back there. Yeah, so that's a different issue, I think. So I, I, and it and was moved. So I, I don't know. 
Maybe we, we should redo this for the next meeting. I, I hate to see us spend money to post it. I would remove it because it has been cut, and then I would look at it on the tenth, me personally, and do a new one for a set date. Because the issue is it, garbage. Even if you adjourn it, July seventeenth from the tenth is not enough time right. to get to into the paper and do the letters that people have to mail out in order for this to happen. We also don't have um, the zoning administrators. Um, notes report and notes on the garbage, right? Or whether right. they've been actually, perhaps they have not actually been cited for the garbage. We don't know. We don't so know. maybe we better, All right. right? So uh, yeah. unfortunately, why don't we um, table this for now? <coughs> I would just keep it, I would withdraw, withdraw it. Withdraw it? Yeah. Withdraw it. Okay. Sorry, I mean. Is that agreeable? Yes. All right, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. We'll withdraw it for now, but keep an eye and follow up with the zoning administrator. Yeah, okay. I'd also <coughs> like to see the next one withdrawn too. I drove by there two days ago and the lawn is cut. And the property's in good order? Yes, well. Okay. <laughs> they have a vine still growing on the house, but yes, it's, it's picked up and the lawn is cut, so. Okay. It's reasonable. Okay. So then the suggestion is to withdraw that one as well. Oh, yes, please. Okay. All right. Okay. Any, uh, everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we are on to uh, 21. number 21. Court so power. I have a couple notifications. I have um, David D'Angelo's, the suicide annual memorial event that they in the past have held at the Arlington Bar and Grill. And last year they did it at Pirates. It's going to be back this year at, um, it's going to be July 28th at the um, Arlington Bar and Grill and Juan Murphy's. And they're um, going to be um, parking at the lot by Davies Hardware, but she also submitted a bunch of different lots where they've gotten the okay to park because they're not going to be using that area by the Hurricane Grill um, for different reasons. But they're they're able. She has gotten permission from Holy Trinity to use their parking lot, um, the parking lot by Davies. Um, I'll now scan this all in tomorrow, and the parking lot um, <laughs> stop and shop if they need it. And she said she'll have a shuttle if that's needed. And the police have been in um, contact. And I'm just waiting for a couple of tweaks on the insurance, possibly. I have to talk to Jim. But other than that, that's happening on July 28th. And um, registration is from 9 to 11, if any of you are bike owners. And I don't know about that. Uh, and the kickstand up, which I didn't know what KSU means, is at 1130. And the event will run from 12 to 6. And then we have a uh, Poughkeepsie Babe Ruth tournament that's going to be happening at Red Oaks Mill, Sheaf Road, and Crown Heights from July 5th through the 9th with a rain date of July 10th. And that's for the 8 and under All-Star tournament. And they're going to be having some food trucks there. And then we also have the Discover Hudson Valley um, ride that I just got yesterday or yesterday, I believe. And that's a bike ride that really starts in the city of Poughkeepsie and then also ends in the city of Poughkeepsie with kind of like an event down at Warius Park or they're going to be driving through the town of Poughkeepsie. Are those and bikes like the bikes on the, that are like, which, which kind of bikes? Like regular road, like regular bicycles. Bicycles, it's a bicycle. not motorcycles. Okay. Not motorcycles. Got we got they're one be, motorcycle event and one bicycle event. They're going to be along Innes, then down Marple, and then Van Wagner, and they were looking for a new cooling station because they used to have a cooling station at Smart Cube. And um, Smart Cube is open on Saturdays. That's going to be happening on July 13th. So they were looking for a new cooling place. Did they... Yeah, so so they're all set, and, and they're just going to be providing me some insurance for that. I'm a little nervous myself about Van Wagner Road because there's no shoulders there, but hopefully people will be aware of bicycles. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, we move on to resolution 22. number 22. Be resolved, Town Board, Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby establish the standard workday for each elective and appointed official shall not be less than six hours per day, and also for employees' positions per attached form RS 2418. Be it further resolved, the standard workday shall <clears throat> be Monday through Friday, and that the following list of the elected officials and their term expiration date. List 10 officials minus two. And be it further resolved that the town, that the following is a list of appointed officials and their term expiration date three appointed officials. <clears throat> Be it further resolved, commencing June 26, 2024, the elected officials or appointed officials shall have recorded and certified, if not in timekeeping system, his or her work activities for a period of three consecutive months, which shall include matters outside the normal working hours for the purpose of actually attending to official duties, 
including to be responding to responding to an emergency, attending an employer-sponsored event or meeting, or responding to members of the public on matters of official business. And <clears throat> that said records have been completed and were submitted to the clerk of the governing board and be it further resolved, the town clerk is authorized and directed to certify the standard work day and reporting uh, a resolution as presented to this town board. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? Well, it's done. Yes, sir. All right. And then I post this now for 30 days on my um, board and on the website, and then I send the certified. Basically, they call it a resolution, but this is actually the resolution that they're looking for, and then they either submit it electronically or send it up to the state. And um, so just point of clarification. Yeah. This this pertains to the New York State Retirement System? Yes. Okay. So it's only for it, those that are in... Is it really in, clear in the resolution language? So, um, well, a standard work day for each elective new... Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, so in other words... It's for purposes of calculating retirement benefits. Right. 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 Okay. So yep. it's, it's for the standard. So if, as right. an example, if I wanted to then participate, I don't participate, I don't believe uh, Councilman Safone does, but if I did at one point, then I would be, I would have to abide by this. You would have to abide. Right, you would have to log your daily hours for three months in order to establish the baseline of your work yeah. hours. Um, and I wanna thank uh, the clerk for, uh, there's a lot of work that goes into that. Uh, get, just right. totaling all that up, it's a lot. So I really appreciate right. it. It's they a lot. have a nice calculator online now, so it wasn't as hard as it used to be. <laughs> That's so good. I've, I've, I've heard a lot about the difficulties of it, but the idea is that we're setting limits. Yes. Right. So that's yep. cool. Absolutely. Okay. okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The resolution carries six to zero. Okay. Uh, I think what we have next are some committee reports. Oh, uh, oh, yes. no, no, the special resolution. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 See, you're keeping me on track. Thank you. All right. Say so when you read these okay. Things. Yep. Keep it. Who's next? Uh, do you want to? Do you want me to do no, these or? I'll, I'll do this one. Oh, okay. Be resolved, oh. Town Board, Town of Kipps, it is hereby granted special consent to the following items to wit. Number one, uh, resignation from Amanda Vale in the Water Department. It be further resolved that upon the objection of any member of the Town Board, an item may be removed from the list and voted on separately. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The resolution to consider this special consent item uh, passes six to zero. Okay. And then uh, I can finish up. The resolution itself is that the town of board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby accept with regret the resignation of Amanda Valley with the town of Poughkeepsie Water Department effective end of business day on Friday, July 5th, 2024. So moved. Second. Second. So again, really regret losing Amanda. She uh, wish her the very, very best in future. It's a great loss to the water department um, and to town hall. She's well, been an incredible asset. She so. has been. I'm, I'm uh, hopeful whatever uh, that her next uh, career will be. I hope she enjoys it because she was uh, she, she was very nice to have her out here. She yes. worked hard. Yep, she did. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution carries six to zero. Okay, thank you. And now we move on to committee reports for senior services, parks, rec, and youth, uh, liaisons, and I may have, I have one more. Well, senior services is very easy. Our last meeting was held here, and we had a big Shane Dake for, <laughs> for Janet McHugh, who retired. And uh, we had a nice turnout. Uh, probably had about 70 or 80 people in here, I would think. And uh, town employees and uh, staff and friends from the senior center came up um, so we just enjoyed her time and thanked her uh, a couple uh, members of the board were here and were able to say goodbye to Janet in a nice way and thank her for all her hard work so uh, we'll have our normal meeting uh, next month Bill our yes. next meeting is next month right yes yeah. so we'll have more to report next month okay great uh, parks recreation and youth anything to report uh, just that the town's website has been updated with all the available camps and uh, lessons. Uh, they're all updated, I believe. I saw that the summer camp registration, week one, the registration is closed. So that means that probably a lot of people registered already, which is good. But on the town's website, it's updated with all the camp information. 
lot of variety of sports, so please take advantage of those. Great. So I will say that uh, we have a little interim here between Janet McHugh's retirement and the arrival of a new Parks and Recreation Director who will also oversee the Senior Center. Um, I will be here at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning with a lot of donuts for the camp counselor training. Um, and I may be calling on people and I may, if it's okay with you, give your number to uh, Frank and to um, the folks, the, the camp director. Uh, particularly those of you who are free during the day uh, to just in case we may need an extra set of hands to help out uh, summer camp starts on July 1st that would be great so okay um, the uh, I would also like to report from the police and courts facility committee uh, at the, uh, the, the board <laughs> authorized a uh, for me to sign an agreement for an appraisal of the IBM 708 building um, and I think I forwarded you by email. Uh, we got uh, the best estimate was from CBRE, and uh, they are going to do a thorough appraisal. Uh, the goal to be done by approximately August the 1st, and the goal will be to see if we can reach an agreement with IBM that would um, enable us to contract with them for a period of due diligence. In the meantime, we are continuing to look at potential other sites. So if there are other sites that people would like to come forward and talk about, uh, one was identified to me yesterday that I want to uh, you know, uh, share. That we don't know whether it's possible or not, but a lot of people have ideas of great sites that didn't, you know, they don't come out necessarily pan out, but we're gonna keep looking. But in the meantime, we will move forward on the, um, on the appraisal um, and see if that gives us a better sense of the, of the building's uh, value and whether we could uh, reach an agreement with IBM. So thank you for, for authorizing that. Um, Ann Berger's not here. Uh, Barb Laird, I think, wants to report from Climate Start, sure. and other people may want to report from other committees as well. Uh, we had our meeting on June 10th, and clim this is Climate Smart Task Force. So we have been instrumental in, in beginning, and we're in the middle of launching the Community Solar Program. Um, this is available only to people who are in low-income housing or they maybe have Section 8. Um, they could be in HEAP, they could be getting um, Medicaid. So anyone who needs help with that type of thing also are available. They could sign up for Community Solar, which would save them up to 20% on their energy bill. So they're getting the grants from solar panels without putting solar panels on their roof or in their backyard. So it's a great program and we're really reaching out to areas of town that you know people might be in that situation and they could save money on their energy bill so I think it's a great thing um, and if you know have any friends or if you are in that situation and you want to save money on your energy bill please uh, look <coughs> on the website or just type in community solar on the town website in the search bar we are still in the process of doing a heat pump um, and an electric vehicle campaign and anyone in the town who signs up for a heat pump to put a new heat pump in their house or buy an electric vehicle, if they let us know, um, that would also get us points. So the whole point of Climate Smart is to push forward uh, the Climate Smart agenda, but save the town money. And that, in hence, would save you taxpayer dollars. Um, so we were talking about different grants that are coming through that are get moved around, but a really exciting thing that I would like to present more on, um, probably the 10th, I guess, or maybe the 17th, but I wanted to talk a teeny tiny bit about elective pay program, which is a program put out by the federal government, not the state government, and it was devised from the um, Inflation Reduction Act. The IRS is in charge of it, so if you, are a pri if you are a private person and you pay federal taxes, you can get tax rebates on things like electric vehicles, solar panels, chargers for your cars. Well, the federal government said, you know what? Municipalities, nonprofits, other agencies that don't pay federal tax, we should give them money to do the same thing. So it is fantastic. It's, I'm gonna talk more about it, but again, more money in our coffers to help save taxpayer dollars. So. That might fit very well with the, we submitted, we joined a bunch of other municipalities in submitting a grant that if we get that money would enable us to do energy audits of the town buildings and identify what, where we could, and to purchase heat pumps and this could be yeah. kind of a supplement to that. Yeah, it, it works on grants, it works on any kind of funding and it goes back to 2023. So it's pretty exciting. It's just, of course, as usual, more paperwork and a little bit of red tape.
it's worth it. Thanks. Okay, I anybody had, else? I had yeah. two things. Just uh, we discussed uh, briefly um, with the police court facility the possibility of maybe if, if we can't come up with a building that works for us, possibly merging. I did have a preliminary conversation with the Board of Commissioners at Fairview. They would be interested if the town's interested, if the police are interested in applying for grants and maybe making a new firehouse because they need one and a police court firehouse facility on their property that they own. So if we wanted to, if we wanted to move forward and try to look at grants as we're going through this process, they'd be willing to put something in writing. So we could certainly talk about that amongst ourselves. That's definitely worth looking at. My concern is whether there's enough space at that property, but uh, we understand that DCC is moving some of its fields that are behind that property. So, and I don't know if that's true or not. So we might first start by talking with Dutchess Community College about whether more space there might open up. Uh, that we could maybe get access to or whether but it's certainly worth looking at so we'll put that on the put that on the radar screen for sure okay. and then uh, fire safety uh, we met uh, with uh, a couple of uh, times now um, and we're still talking about battery storage with Mike Welty uh, we talked about containage and monitoring and submerged and how to decommission uh, if something was wrong with the battery storage area um, Fred uh, our building department is still doing inspections at all the apartment complexes uh, we've, he's done over a thousand already, and he wanted us to let people know that your smoke alarms only last 10 years. So uh, keep track of when you put them up last and uh, look into changing them if you can. Make sure to re change, your, change your fire alarms every, uh, fire, ex um, fire alarm. alarm every 10 years. Phil, do okay. you have anything else Good. from that? Sure. Anything else? Do you have anything else for fire? No, I don't have anything else nope. for fire. Um, just one thing with the seniors. <coughs> Take this opportunity to thank Chief and his team, Chief Cavalier, um, coming out for the for the monthly uh, coffee with council person meetings. Uh, we've been tag teaming with the canines, and uh, it's a very big hit. So thank you for freeing them up and scheduling them because it means a lot to the seniors. It's great PR, and uh, I just wanted to make a special thank you to you know to you and the team for doing that. It's very big impact for the seniors. So thank you. Wonderful. Okay, any other reports? Okay, then I have resolution 26. Be it resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby adjourn to executive session to consider the medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person uh, matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion um, of a particular person or, uh, or corporation and uh, to discuss matters exempt under the uh, open meetings law, which are matters subject to the attorney-client privilege and issues of personnel. These are personnel issues. So, um, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh. All right. Yeah, yeah. Doreen eight. would like to speak. Uh, yeah, okay. Open, open. So maybe oh, yeah, what we, we want to do is have discussion on before we go and on any dis ish items that are not on the agenda Second. tonight. So I uh, so moved that we uh, that we move go uh, that we suspend the rules. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so let's suspend the rules for issues that are not on our agenda tonight. Doreen? Thank you. Um, I just had a question about number 14, about the tattoo parlors. So, um, Rebecca, did you say that that was already in operation and they had gotten permits even though they weren't allowed? They did get permits from the town. Um, it was not it was an oversight uh we had a we actually had a back and forth this week as to the zoning at the gallery mall and yeah. i think the assumption was that tattoo parlors were except were already in, included in that zone uh but they actually are not they are included in highway uh but not in shopping center so it was a retroactive discovery that permits had been given but that that's not according to the zoning code Gee, well, okay, thanks for explaining that, but I do find that troubling that a permit was given without checking to see whether um, it was allowed. And um, the only other thing is I am glad that uh, you're going to have a committee about the tax certs, because anybody that's been listening to town board meetings for years has known that I've been talking about these. And again, the lowering of the assessments just means that's spread out among other taxpayers in the town. So that's it, thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Okay, I move that we return to regular session. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, then uh, we can reconsider our resolution to go into executive session uh, to discuss personnel matters. So moved. Second. 
All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and I believe we're going into executive session at 8.18 p.m. Thank you, everyone.